It's Thursday and welcome to our daily prayers. Um, you'll see picture here of the construction of the sea monster. Um, I've recently noticed they're putting trees on it. This is an earlier photo um, where I must admit they're using all sorts of exciting different cranes to construct the thing. Here is a sort of double crane. I've no idea quite how it works, but um, it looks great. <laughs> so I wonder if you've been watching the construction of the sea monster on the front over these last few weeks. Anyway, let's come before our God today. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Now we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, this time at verse 7. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift, as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, as we were saying the other day, um, Paul has a bit of an issue with this church in Corinth, who are almost putting so much emphasis on what they can do, all kinds of speech and knowledge he refers to, that they're slightly forgetting the God who's inspired everything in the first place. And here is another way in which Paul is making that clear by setting what they're doing in the context of the return of Jesus Christ. It's only at that point that things will really come to fruition. For this church, they might have been feeling almost that they've brought heaven in. They've got so excited about all their speech and knowledge and prophecy, they think they're already there. And Paul's reminding them that this is purely a step on the way and they're awaiting the final return of Christ. And I wonder for you and I, sometimes we want it all now. And part of the Christian life is hanging on for that point where the full justice will be revealed. God's full heaven will be available. And up until that point, we look forward to it with faith, but we still have to endure all sorts of difficulties and temptations in this world. We haven't got it all here. There is far more to come. I wonder if you see your faith in that context. Maybe a time to reflect on that as we have a pause for our prayers now. And indeed, this final return is reflected in the Lord's Prayer, where we pray to God, your kingdom come. We see little glimpses of it now, but the full reality of it will be in the end times. But that's not to say that God isn't at work now, showing us the first parts, the first instalments of his kingdom through us and the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.